Before we start, I want to say a big thank you to Billy Go Entertainment for providing a copy of this game for review purposes. Hi, this is Mark for Switch Up Gaming as well. Thanks to Glenn for doing his part of the review. How we're going to work this is we're each going to do a section of review. I'm going to try and splice it all together so that it sounds nice and fluid and that you guys can hopefully get a good picture of what we both think of the game from two completely different perspectives. Her Majesty's Spiffin is a point and click game at heart and I would hazard a guess that the developers are big fans of the LucasArts gems of the past such as Monkey Island as their influence is clearly felt here. It's a humorous game and a joke about literally breaking the fourth wall within the first five minutes lets you know what you're in for. In the kitchen, if memory serves me correct, it's just down this corridor, beyond the fourth wall. The game's story is based around Brexit of all things and the Queen's decision to disband her government due to the whole affair and look to expand her empire elsewhere, namely in space. So she creates the Special Planetary Investigative Force for Inhabiting New Galaxies, or Spiffin for short and sends Britain's finest out to find undiscovered lands. The story goes that post-Brexit, Britain basically gets sacked off by the rest of the world. This in turn leaves us in a bit of a pickle. What are we going to do? Well, the Queen, being flipping awesome, decides that the only option is for us to begin exploring the stars, presumably in search for a new home. Makes sense, right? I think this game gets the honour of being the first to base its story around Brexit. It plays on the typical British stereotypes where all Englishmen speak like Hugh Grant, and all Welsh people feel compelled to end every single sentence with the word I really think so. I was afraid it would sound a little bit clichéd. But it does so with its tongue planted firmly in its cheek. In many ways, it reminds me a lot of Wallace and Gromit, both in terms of look and humour. It certainly has a similar sort of charm. Take the time to read every sign on the wall and look at every object in sight, as there are literally puns, jokes and references to British pop culture everywhere. What do we have here? Ah! For me, it was all part of the experience. So calling a game quintessentially British is a term you often hear misused by people who aren't actually British. To them, the sight of a cup of tea or the Queen is enough to make something English. Hello! You start your journey aboard a spaceship piloted by the captain, frankly English, and his sidekick, as Glenn mentioned. One stereotypically English what-ho and a Welsh lad. I was sceptical of the Welsh character at first, with this constant boyo. Perhaps it's best not to heighten expectations too early on, boyo. Which, although Welsh people do say sometimes, it seemed a little forced and overly frequent. However, as the story progresses, he becomes a little bit less annoying and a little bit more amusing. I enjoyed the little in-jokes that most British people would understand. The fairy liquid joke made me laugh out loud. Ah, here is a bottle of mild green washing liquid. The voice acting is generally of a good standard, with the main character, Frank Lee English's lines, being delivered with all the stiff upper lippidness you would expect. I mean the royal we. I'll sort this out. Don't move. I don't want you dribbling on anything else. Honestly, you're worse than the elderly. Co-pilot Alid Jones. No, not that Alid Jones. His lines are just stiff without the upper lip and sometimes miss the mark. Still, they are a fun duo and their conversations are amusing to listen to. You will start to hear the same lines repeated as the game goes on, and while that can wear a little thin, it's by no means a major issue. While the dialogue doesn't shy away from laughing at some of the more tired mechanics of the point-and-click genre, neither does the game shy away from using them. For example, a joke about how tediously drawn out searching for an item is only to immediately need another is followed by an objective to search for an item only to immediately need another. I'm sure this was very much intentional on the developer's part, but it's ironic nonetheless. The controls are simple enough, with the left analog stick giving you control over your character, as opposed to a cursor on the screen, like old school points and click games, and holding the A button down, bringing up an actions wheel, where you can then select from. Pressing X displays all of the items in your inventory, and from here you can equip, examine, or attempt to combine your items. It's all very standard for the genre, and while at times it can feel a little clunky, it's perfectly serviceable. And again, I get the impression that developers were purposely going for that clunky style. The game plays like a telltale adventure game. If you are familiar with the Monkey Island series of games, you will have a good idea of what to expect. Notably though, the control scheme has a few familiar but welcomed additions. This adventure title takes a context-sensitive quick menu, which can be accessed by holding the A button. This brings up four options. Interact with the hand, 
talk to the person, use an item or just look at the thing. This is a nice system for an adventure title. I loved when it was first introduced back in Curse of the Monkey Island all those years ago and then it was used in full throttle. That was amazing, you could lick things. I can see older point and click fans finding it simplistic, however there is still a level of complexity such as the ability to combine inventory items, as well as the option to look closely and rotate the 3D models of your inventory to find additional clues. This was nice and it was unexpected to be honest. In a game based around combining objects this adds a nice layer of detail. Rotating an item to notice that there are no batteries and then finding said batteries is a logical progression, but one which could not take place as effortlessly without that system. The puzzles for the most part are simple enough and nowhere near as obtuse as some that you would have found in games of this type in years gone by. That's not to say that there aren't a couple of head scratches here, one in particular had me stumped for a little while. The standard aspect of this adventure game is the humour. At several points it was laugh out loud funny and thankfully many of the jokes required some knowledge of a time before the 21st century. One moment stands out where the main character screams By the power of Greyskull If that reference makes sense to you, it gives you some idea of the type of content to expect. The humour isn't always on point however as Glenn said, the Welsh character just seemed to be much less developed. They clearly wanted him to be the intelligent one of the pair, but he rarely had a chance to show this, often coming across as just dull rather than sensible. There are some really great dialogue exchanges between them. You need to swat up in your acronyms FFS for future scenarios and the writing is self-referentially amusing overall. I just would love to see both characters more fleshed out in the next instalment. Her Majesty's Spiffin is a fun game that harkens back to classic games in the point and clip genre. If you were to take the humour of Monkey Island, throw in the campy Britishness of the Carry On films, mix in some Wallace and Gromit, and finally add a sprinkling of the Telltale game's controls, then you would end up with something that very much resembles this game. The price of £9.99 seems fair for a game that will probably last you around 2-4 to four hours, depending on how easy or difficult you find the puzzles. When you consider that some people would happily pay a tenner for a couple of hours entertainment watching a comedy on Blu-ray, then I don't think this game can be considered overpriced. However, if you are someone that judges value for money on how many hours a game provides, rather than how much you enjoy the experience, you may need to seriously consider the short runtime and the lack of replayability. This game is short, like really short. I would say it will probably last most people around two to three hours, unless you use a guide and then it's going to take you probably 35-40 minutes, which for the price seems questionable. However, the puzzles for the most part are enjoyable and more importantly logical. There is nothing worse than when these types of games create absurd puzzles which just require random guesswork. Thankfully, this is not the case here. And I did feel like I was playing a game created by a developer who clearly grew up, like I did, in the era of Monkey Island. Losing battle, Captain. Aye, and it reminds me of a song. A While the main character is no Guybrush Threepwood, I did enjoy controlling him and really would love to play a sequel. The heavy emphasis on British humour may put some people off and it may lead to some jokes falling a little flat if you're not from the UK but in all honesty, it shouldn't be a deal breaker if you are interested in this game to begin with. And for that reason, I give Her Majesty's Spiffin a 7 out of 10. This last thought is what stays with me after the credits rolled. I want to be in this world more. I want to find out what happens next and I think you will too. At the end of the credits, the game jokingly states the characters would return if the game sells enough. I hope for the developer's sake they get the chance. I would give this game a 7.5 out of 10. The content that is here is great, we just need more. Thanks again so much to the developers like Glenn said, we really appreciate the review code. We've had a great time playing the game over the last few days and writing these reviews and it has been a pleasure and we hope to work with you guys in the future. And yeah, for the rest of you watching the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. Switch up.